Hello again everyone, Saki here and welcome back to Planet Zoo Career Mode and today we are getting into the bear essentials in the Panda Park. It's uh, Bernard Goodwin's newest zoo built from the ground up to celebrate the panda in all of its forms. This park represents unparalleled opportunity to show the world just how much the Goodwin Foundation knows about breeding animals on the cusp of endangerment. So don't squander it. Pretty high, uh, pretty high stakes here, but we'll just roll right into it and let's get with the panda. All right, here we are with some Asian uh, decoration up here. And looks very cool with the pagoda style roof and all that good stuff. Ah, pandas. <laughs> and they're my daughter's favorite animal. I mean, they're a good animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Indeed, there's oh, one well, right there. That's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take oh, got some saltwater crocs up in here. Top spot. <laughs> Oh, but did now you know, that's a cool layout. I do like that for sure. Conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. Pandas? <laughs> Amazing. That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. Let's see how and we can really screw it up. To our reputation, a reputation that you're going to be in charge. Yeah, we of haven't got any flamingos before. All the uh, general maintaining too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally important. Yeah, I imagine the so. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you too. Ah, <laughs> uh, we can deal with Nancy. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm sure she's going to pop up Welcome here in a minute. Welcome to China. This is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. Oh, so someone lost the balloon right not away. Quite finished, but we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. All right, tour the zoo. We shall. What is the first thing Obviously that we do? The giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. I said, look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. Okay, and where is this panda? Let's get our objectives up here. All right, locate the giant panda habitat, which we've apparently stumbled into, and enter the giant panda camera. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, and now we need to enter the giant panda animal camera, and there is little the cub Lin Lin. To enter animal camera mode. Yep, there you go. So little Lin Lin chewing. That kind of looked like chopsticks there with that bamboo. Oh, the cockles of your heart. So cute. Did you know that giant pandas, or Ailuropoda melanoleuca, for being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears? They can actually eat. Geez, they demolish that quick, fast, and in a hurry. A day. Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. That is crazy. That's a lot of pandas. Oh, no. I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first, and that they're displaying signs of disease. Oh, crap. We'll have to move them into quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. Sounds good. To do that, go to the highlighted habitat, Find the infected animal and then select them to bring up their information panel. All right, so uh, Kitwana now is the only sable antelope here. Quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Okay, where? Oh, that's way in the world over there. All right, so do we do we box and then send? I haven't actually physically quarantined yet. Do we select the quarantine? Okay, so the quarantine's over there. Sable antelope is here. Do we box them up, or do we call the vet? Let's see. Now let's call a vet. And actually, it doesn't look like Hitwana is got any diseases going. At least uh, none that we are um, aware of. Now let's box up the animal then. And move. Okay, here we go. We'll physically move to quarantine. 
view. That's a relief. Now, now it's got the disease. Now that we've gotcha. The infection from spreading any further. We need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then returned to his habitat. Oh, so I'm the caretaker's going to take it. Like okay, it. gotcha. So why don't we head over there? All right, locate the highlighted area there with In some order rocks. To build the vet surgery. Click on facilities, staff facilities, and then vet surgeries. All right, some vet surgery. Uh, let's go vet surgery. Hey, and we do have a little bit of vet surgery right here. We'll spin her right round, baby, like a record. And make sure that the path connects up. Yeah, I was going to say, make sure it is connected to a path. That's the job. Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as yes. they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Yeah, and we got capacity for one, so mm. hopefully the vet yes. can get on Diseases that. Diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. Right. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down, and oh, the crap. water in yep, the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Yep, and we will repair on the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. And got the mechanic in route, so hopefully a mechanic will yes. show up fairly quick. I don't quick. think you need a degree in mechanics to tell that this thing's thoroughly banjaxed. Click banjaxed to get them to come over and fix it for us. Yep, mechanic so is en route. Just to explain, water treatment facilities work in a similar manner to power sources in that they have a radius of influence around them. That yeah, that whole water section water, there and there partly within that radius, looks like it's affected by the water treatment here. Also, like power sources, if they get damaged, that radius there of we influence go. will shrink, meaning that we it got uh, Quiana Holbrook on the case just within its reach. If you want to check how much of your zoo is covered by your water treatment facilities, then there's a heat map you can use to see the coverage. Yeah, that I was just way, looking at that. Quickly spot problem areas and rectify the issue. Sweet. Water treatment is done Good and work. bring research now bordeliosis to level repaired, 1. So let's get on that. Let's get in some vet research and research uh, bordeliosis uh, with Tommy. Spins, since that's a uh, 5 star and, and wow, that uh, happened quick fast and in a hurry. That is nuts. Now, so that is a bronze honest, medal done. I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had. So I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. And then research just I'd a momento. Like to start some gotcha. research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research. So head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. All right, so that's souvenir shops. Yep, indeed. Uh, Kuyana. Lovely job. Once we need to get on to uh, the... Disease packing in no time. There we go. Souvenir shop. All right, so locate Ooh, the highlighted area that again. That was a close run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible All right, adopt and place the gifted giant pandas. Transfer the giant Although, pandas to trade luckily, center. Move the giant pandas to quarantine. To move wife. one male giant panda to new habitat. All right, so I don't think right. we've got the gifted now pandas right now, but we'll be on the lookout for that. Oh, yeah, there we, we do. To focus on the guests and improving their Transfer the park. gifted pandas to the trade see, center. You can also do research into new and improved guest facilities. Transport All right, got that done. Well new types of barrier and other things via the workshop. I've highlighted the workshop for you, so head over there, select it, and then click on View Workshop. All right, move the giant Great pandas to stuff. quarantine. That research will take a little while, so let's have a look at something else in the meantime, because we've had some good news. There we go. There's quarantine. Finally, we can send them from animal storage to quarantine. To do that, just select them in animal storage, then click send to zoo, and then click on the quarantine facility in the zoo. All right, got them. So they I should be on their way to quarantine. And then once that's While done, we should be able to move one male giant panda so to a new only. habitat. I'll also need you to bring over one of the male pandas from our other habitat, but because without him, 
We're not going to have much of a breeding program, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him over and get everything set up for your pandas. All right, so there's one, two, and three in quarantine. All right, a male panda. Now, we've only got three female pandas in quarantine. Move one male giant panda to new habitat. Okay. So that is a five-star giant panda. Is there another panda that isn't five-star? We'll take a look-see. Uh, gu Guang. Okay, so you're a five-star. Do we have a lot of five-star pandas then? That'd be cool. We have Go Away. Where are you at? Okay, you chilling under here. Yeah, it looks like all these pandas are uh, five star. Okay, so Yasheng. And we need to move to a new habitat. So we'll move. And move over here to the new panda habitat? Okay, cool. Set up the new, hand new panda habitat. Use filters to make sure you get the correct items. All right, let's get started. Yeah, it's like uh, this uh, zoo's going ham for pandas. All right, so we need a feeding station. Let's go ahead and sort by our giant panda here and make sure that we get the good stuff. All right, so we need food and water first. So first is the arboreal feeding platform, which I think we can put down here. And then we need a food enrichment item. All right, food enrichment. Aha. Our small roller. All right, then we need toy enrichment. Let's grab a rubbing pillar. Increase terrain and plants to 90%. All right, so that is going to be uh, when we get the panda in the exhibit. We can take a look at what kind of terrain uh, this panda needs. And I imagine we'll be uh, moving those female pandas from quarantine to here sooner rather than later. But, uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. I was going to say. All right. Terrain painting. We'll make sure that we select the panda so we're sure uh, what we're doing here. So we need plant and terrain. All right. First off the terrain, we have plenty of space, but we have uh, way too much long grass and not enough short grass. Sounds good for us. Let's go ahead and reduce all of that long grass here. And it looks like there's a crap ton of long grass here that we need to uh, rid ourselves of as well. All right, so that is within the tolerance there. So that should be good terrain score. And then plant score, we need Asian temperate. All right, let's get on that then. Uh, let's go continent, Asia, and biome temperate. Hopefully we have a good group of plants to choose from. All right, so the black poplar tree. We'll put that down. Oh, and we have some of these that are not. There we go. Yeah, we had some that were not really cool with what we were doing here. That's a lot of coverage there. Oof. All right, and then we need, how about a black poplar tree back here? All right, getting more plants, more plants, more plants. Common ash tree. Yeah, let's cover that on up. Uh, how about an elm tree? N a nightmare on elm tree. Good news. Our new female pandas have been given a clean bill of health. You'd best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible, because animals will only breed if they're happy. All right, move giant pandas from quarantine to the new habitat. Yes, indeedy. All right, so our quarantine... Aha, right here. And can we select all? Yes, we can. All right. Move. And plop them all in here. Oh, bless. I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. Yes, indeed. <laughs> While they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else. Oh, dear me. There's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well... Unless you hit the pause button. Indeed. All right. Hire okay. and assign a work zone I told you all to about one keeper. Zones. Okay. They don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see, 
Work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habits. Oh, I like this. Tasks within the zoo, so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. All right, keeper southwest. No, so we need keeper. Creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so that they know to look after the new pandas. Yeah, northwest should be fine. Go into the zoo section, then click on staff and then work zones. Yeah, gotcha. So we've assigned that new uh, exhibit to the work zone. Now your attention on our new pandas. Oh, and just so you know, all types of staff can be assigned work zones. Just make sure that they have access to all the buildings that they need. And one last thing, you might find it faster to assign them from the work zones tab in the staff section of zoo management. That'll save you having to chase around selecting your staff one by one. Indeed. Oh, it sounds like the brand research has been completed. You should collect your rewards. Then and let's you can do it. do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into mechanic research. All right, mechanic research is done. Now we have the now souvenir we've got shop. Our lovely new just a memento shop designed. You should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way the guests won't miss it on their way out and we won't miss out on their money. On their money. All right, guest facilities, and we need just a memento. All right, we'll rotate that on right around there. I like the blueprint already ready to go. Terrain modification failed. Oh, no. No, you don't. All right, how about here, then? Invalid rotation. So all right so i had to actually anyway, look this I'm up so if you run moment, into sure the problem of placing it. just a memento uh hit x to get into the advanced movement oh, mode and literally um raise adorable. it up a bit it will not place flat <laughs> on the ground so that's something to uh keep bears. in mind and uh and glad that the internet was there to solve it gift shop branding just a memento <laughs> very clever much better than our old overpriced gifts branding <laughs> i'm all for truth in advertising but it was perhaps a little <laughs> on the nose all right so next Back up have 18 promise. species in the right. zoo and i'm I'd thinking like some exhibit animals may be the way to go in the zoo. now you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area yeah and i'm just I'm looking right here lady to fit them all in then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. All right, mixed Just species make sure habitats. To, check the Zookedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g., don't mix lions with antelopes. Gotcha. All right, so I will go ahead and uh, save you the trouble. I'll go through, see what animals uh, can share uh, exhibits, and see um, if I can put three down. And I will be right back. All right, so, so to save you time, none of these species except for one like to share their habitat. The one that does is the sable antelope with the warthog and the, uh, the common ostrich and the black wildebeest and all the other stuff. Except the bad thing is when we go to our animal dealer in our animal market, um, we don't have access to any of them. We only have the tortoise tapir. Oh, we've got one black wildebeest, which unfortunately uh, they need a crap ton of other wildebeest with them. Um, so basically we need seven for the wildebeest to be happy. However, if we only do one, he's not gonna be happy. So there's only one wildebeest to purchase uh, to share that exhibit. So I'm not wanting to do that unless absolutely necessary. Uh, looking at the other uh, animals that we can purchase, we have let me flip this back again. Uh, the Chinese pangolin likes to live alone. The Formosan black bear, we don't have, um, so we could build a, a bear exhibit. The Gariel don't like to share. The Flamingo don't like to share. We could put in some peafowl, uh, so that could be animal number two. Uh, we have plenty of pl pronghorn antelope as well. Uh, and timber wolves, we don't have any timber wolves in our exhibit either. So basically it's just up to what we have access to and how many of them uh, like to be alone. So we've got uh, space for two wolves, we can uh, do that. And 
Yeah, so I will get the first exhibit put down and the animals done and be right back. All right, timber wolves are on their way. We have a one-way glass set up, 12 foot tall. That way uh, those hills won't pose much of a problem for us. But we have brand new timber wolves in here. Let's go ahead and get them all set up as we do. And they don't want any long grass and they want all snow. So that will be uh, fine for us to do. We'll go ahead and uh, make this all snow if we can, a skadoosh. And then we'll be sure to put in some uh, temperature for these wolves for sure. And basically no grass here whatsoever. We'll get some coolers in here to lower that temperature down for them. As uh, they don't want to see any grass at all. Which is uh, to be under, you know, it's understandable. Alright, so that is all of the long grass gone. Um, and this needs to be turned into snow so that this rock goes away. Of course, we're going to have to lower the temperature for that. Uh, looking at these wolves and their zoopedia, good temperature for them is going to be negative 8 to 29. Um, so basically, in order to keep all of the uh, snow on the ground, we're going to get in here with some coolers. Uh, the cooler here. Uh, put this down. Hopefully, it's within power. Uh, but we are going to... Basically chill this right down to a negative three degrees Celsius and then duplicate those up and get a nice cool area for the wolves and as that snow starts to form uh, we should really start to see their terrain uh, modify here. Just waiting on that temperature to drop. Hopefully, uh, it drops enough here. There we go, and booyah! All the snow on the ground, and that helps tremendously here. All right, keeper cannot reach habitat, so this is work zone related. Let's see exactly what, whoops, which uh, work zone we can assign this to. Uh, we'll edit work zone, and it looks as if, let's see, so keeper five is over here. Or keeper small. Keeper southeast, northwest. Yeah, we definitely don't want to do keeper northwest up in here. How about southeast? No, okay. I think the keeper south would be fine. We'll go ahead and put that down. Oh, and that solar panel as well. Yeah, we've got some... Uh, some buildings here that aren't assigned to any work zone, which I guess is fine if it is, uh, you know, all free and clear. Everyone can come and go as you please. That makes sense. All right, so that is our timber wolves in. Now we just need some hard shelter as we do. Uh, let's go beds and shelters and let's select our timber wolves. See if we have anything uh, ready to go that the timber wolves would like. The 8x8x2, eight by eight by perhaps? If we put it in this back corner. How does that do for your hard shelter? Awesome. That gets you all set. Environment's good. Enrichment items are the next item up for bids. On the price is right. Uh, let's go with enrichment. All right, so let's get a dog ball. That's going to be food. Okay. How about a block of ice? All right, that's 46. The sprinkler, up there for 68. And a small ball for 75. Will the cardboard box do anything for us here? No, didn't think so. So let's go ahead and get rid of the cardboard box. Don't need it. But overall, the timber wolves uh, should now be fairly happy. Yeah, nutrition enrichment is suffering, but we don't have any uh, research done on them. And since we got the moolah, uh, let's go ahead and adjust the food See if we know any food quality here. No, just grade one food quality. So that is the timber wolves done. And that should be one more species uh, ready to go. We have 16, so we need two more. Um, I'll try to find an exhibit animal that we can put down, say, uh, over here or over here to get a twofer. So I will do further investigation and be right back.
All right, a couple new exhibit animals. Uh, I got a double here, uh, the Brazilian wandering spider, and I had to put a solar panel over here sort of out of the way. Uh, next up, uh, aside from the Brazilian wandering spider, uh, we also found the common death adder, which should be fine uh, on his own. Yep, one to five. Sounds good, so let's go ahead and get the common death adder. Uh, adopt and send to that zoo right I'm there. I'm sure you know by now how to make your animals happy. So you'd best get that sorted before the inspector gets you. Sorry, did I not mention there was an inspector coming? Oh, oh dear. All right, so now we have to increase overall habitat species to uh, 84%. Okay, sounds good. All right, so that is, uh, we need to get temperature range up. 23 to 31 degrees, uh, let's go with uh, 25, and then 60 to 80 percent humidity, we'll go 70 right in the board. And that should be fine to increase the welfare, yes indeed. And do we know any layouts? No, we do not, uh, but that should be fine and dandy. So, now it's time to uh, improve some of the, the stuff for the zoo, increasing animal habitat species and all that good stuff. Uh, looking at our animal welfare, oh, our okapi is in a bad position. Holy crap on a cracker, what is wrong here? We have the ideal social, but not social welfare. Interesting, so what is the, what is the shimmy here? One to two, one male and one female. So we'll have to get uh, one of these uh, animals out of the zoo. And we have one and one. Oh, Baird's Tape here and Okapi. Okay, so the Okapi. Does the Okapi need another Okapi? One to two. No, you're fine. Is it because it's a female? No, it's a male. Interesting. And then our Baird's Tape here, looking fine. Uh, so what is up with the Okapi? Big social. Oh, stress. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I mean, you can hide. You can, you can, you can be fine there. Um, I don't know if we can work on any food enrichment items for you. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see if that is indeed the case. Uh, food and water. Nope, food enrichment for the okapi. And we'll see if we can improve. It may be one of those things where the okapi has to hide and then we'll be fine. A sprinkler and rubbing pillar, but we don't have the hanging barrel feeder. All right, so we'll put that down. And the okapi, there we go, maximum enrichment. So the okapi should be a little bit happier now. Uh, and as that stress goes away, the uh, social or the welfare will go up as well, raising up our average. Uh, don't know. We need five more percent here. Let's see if there's anyone really just out of the way. Okay, so a red panda is on the struggle bus as well. Uh, bad social, uh, due to the stress, so you're hiding. Uh, and is that the only thing that is setting you back? Yeah, it looks like. So as long as you hide, everything is awesome. So, um, yeah, it may be a thing where ideally they're going to hide. But, I mean, everybody else is at 85%. Uh, let's look at the next lowest on the welfare. So the Akapi and the flamingos and there is a lot of flamingos in here at 72 percent so if we can fix up this we can knock out a massive amount in just short uh in short time so they have a forage pool uh but they don't have anything else yeah let's see if we can fix that so enrichment items for the uh what are they called the greater flamingo and with a lot of flamingos in here, that should be fine. All right, so the waterfall and metal frame enrichment. Okay, we'll put that down and see what we got. So that's 78. And the forage pool, I don't know if the scent marker counts as food. No, it's just a toy. Okay, so we can close that up. And already that should have... Yeah, 89%. So because, you know, a crap ton of animals got fixed right there, a little bit better. And then our giant pandas over here are on the struggle bus as well. Once again, lower enrichment for these pandas. Uh, let's see if we know any panda enrichment and can boost that up a bit. 
All right, so instead of Greater Flamingo, we will go with the Giant Panda. All right. So they have the small barrel roller feeder. Uh, there's also a tree scatterer feeder that we can put down. So we'll put that down up to 77. Everything humming away nicely. Well done. All right, improve the zoo for your guests. It seems that Open the guest needs. Chief beef, cosmic cow, information center, toilet block, five bins, five benches. Holy crap. That means making sure they have great views of the animals, lots of places to buy food and drink, and, well, lots of places to get rid of food and drink. Keep maps, guest needs. Toilets. You should think carefully about where to put your guest facilities, though. For instance... Don't put all of the food shops in the same place. Just look at how the guests are distributed around the park and put your facilities where they'll be needed the most. As long as you remember to pay attention to what the guests are thinking, you'll soon have a handle on what everyone wants. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be long-winded, so I'll go ahead and put down the Chief Beef Cosmic Cow Information Center, Toilet Block, Five Bins, and Five Benches. Um, you know, I'll look at... Who is red here and what they need? Um, happiness. Um, okay, I spent too much time walking. So maybe some benches along here. I'll just haphazardly, you know, find where people are on the struggle bus the most and uh, get this done and be right back. All right, that is here. it. Now, Chief Beef I and uh, Cosmic Cow over here. Colors. Anything less, and I might have to organize a little job exchange scheme for you with whoever's mucking out the pandas. All right. So Zoo Inspector is here. We need an overall star rating of 2.5. Going to see the Sable Antelope Kitwana, first and foremost. So Kitwana is a three star. You know, happy. Hap you know, as, as good as we can. The new panda going to see Chang Chang. Uh, so Chang 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 is over here. Going to be tough to see, but two star there. Okay. Greater Flamingo going to see Nawal Nawals. Is that Nawal? Yeah, one star. So, you know, juvenile. Last meal quality. Can we do something to improve the meal quality quick, fast, and in a hurry? It's grade two. Grade three. Yeah, grade three. You know, give the flamingos the best uh, possible food you can. And then we're seeing the Baird's tape here with Odisa. Okay, there is Odisa there, five star. That should be a, a swing and a, a hit right there. And then Habitat 12 going to see Bashiri. All right, so Bashiri, our wolf, is a four star. So we should be okay. Um, so I will wait and see about this uh, inspector and uh, report in when the inspector has seen each animal. All right, inspector has just looked at our new panda, uh, Cheng Cheng, and is en route to the Greater Flamingo. So five stars for our first little panda here, trying to find, come on, there's Cheng Cheng. No, it's Raulon. Where in the world was Cheng Cheng? Either way, these pandas are uh, really happy. So next up, uh, well, I guess will be the Greater Flamingo Nawal. All right, next inspection will be our uh, Flamingo here, the Greater Flamingo Nawal. Uh, hopefully a four or five star rating. We only need an average of 2.5. So as long as we're not a total dirt bag, uh, I think we can get a two and a half stars. Uh, all my other inspections in my franchise zoo uh, was four stars or higher. Uh, every single time so as long as we keep doing what we know how to do there we go five star for the greater flamingo in route to the Baird's tape here to see Adisa our lonely Okapi uh, over here who aside from the nutrition is uh, pretty perfect um, can we do a food setting real quick uh, for our yeah, let's go grade two quality for our Baird's tape here for our Okapi grade two just to see if, in the meantime, our keepers uh, can give our Okapi a little bit higher uh, food quality and improve that star rating a bit. All right, next inspection up for our Okapi. Uh, hopefully a five star. Uh, yeah, probably looking over from uh, this, this perspective here. Um, perhaps this isn't 
Oh, maybe this isn't scalable? So we only need a fence up to here and then we can do like a natural cliffside down? That's an interesting idea. But a five star for that Baird's Tape here in Okapi en route to Habitat 12 to see Bashiri, our new Arctic wolf, which is basically right across the street. Uh, just coming up from here from the Okapi, walked across the street to see the Arctic wolf. Uh, hopefully our brand new Arctic wolf will be of good quality. Uh, our average is really, really good so far. Uh, even if we one star, I think we're going to make it uh, just from the law of averages. But there we go. Nice. Bashiri is a five star as well. Holy crap. If uh, our sable antelope, Kitwana, becomes a five star as well, I might get that achievement for, um, for getting a five star. Oh, no, that was our... Yeah, that was our old objectives in our franchise mode. Never have I gotten five stars before, so it all comes down to Kitwana. We'll see what happens. All right, last inspection. Let's see if our sable antelope comes in at five stars or even four or three, I, I, even one star. Uh, we would probably complete our task of getting the overall star rating at 2.5, but we are going for the perfect five star rating here. Uh, hopefully we don't have to wait until the inspector leaves. Do we? Yeah, I think we might. Either that or the inspector. Yeah. So the inspector is going to leave the zoo, but we got a five star across the board uh, average, which is really, really good. So we will wait for that inspector to leave and uh, we I will be right back. And there we go. You know, I really can't believe just how much you've come on during our time together. It goes to show, Bernie's got a keen eye for talent. Oh, Indeed. Speaking of Bernie, he's not finished with you yet. He's got a oh, what's new that? job for you in Canada. I get oh, the feeling that sorry, I can't make it, eh? Oh, listen, it's been wonderful getting to know you, and I'm sure we'll meet again. But in the meantime, so it's the last time with Nancy, huh? So does that mean we're going to start doing things from the ground up? I and if that is indeed the case, the faces of all of the guests. And that's a real testament to the hard work you've put into this place. And if anything, I hear the animals look even happier. <laughs> Although, in all honesty, it's, it's hard to tell with the pandas. They're so uh, <laughs> enigmatic. Right. Now, I'm told that Linlin's quite the character, though. Oh, oh, she's really been a hit with the visitors. You could even say the business is bam booming. <laughs> sure. And fingers crossed, we might even be able to feature pandas at some of my other zoos. Now that you've shown everyone, we know how to cater for their welfare. I should. Yeah, be we'll give that a try. Though. After all, you've become a very capable trainee zoo manager. I suspect there isn't a single task I could throw at you which you wouldn't handle with a plum. That said. I think the next one's going to be a bit of a curveball. <laughs> All right, so that sounds uh, daunting indeed. Um, and if it gets to the point where these career modes are going to take longer than my uh, allotted recording time, I might have to break up some of the career mode into separate episodes. Uh, but three stars in each is what we are going for. Uh, and some of that might take some time, especially if it is build a zoo from the ground up to a five star rating with, you know, a million dollars or something like that. Um, that took me many episodes to do in franchise mode. So if we're doing more of the same, uh, we'll see how we can break that up in the future. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you for the next Planet Zoo Career Mode video. Take care.